everybody. How are you? Happy Friday and happy September. September is um, beginning of fall and beginning, that means for me, the beginning of fall fashion and being able to wear all my favorite colors. So hooray for September, hooray for fall. I'm loving all of the oranges and the golds, browns and burgundies. And September also means back to school. So I hope that your back to school adventure is going well. Ours is a little bumpy, but we're managing. Um, anyway, since it's back to school, I wanted to come on really quick for a few minutes and talk teen acne with you. You may have taken care of the backpacks and the lunch bags and notebooks and pencils and paper, uh, maybe a back to school haircut, who, you know, new shoes, but you may not have thought about addressing your teen's confidence, their self-esteem, um, and their oily skin. So let's talk teen acne uh, for a couple of minutes. Um, sorry, the phone is ringing. One of the most common misconceptions when it comes to acne is that breakouts form overnight. So a lot of over-the-counter products are geared towards just spot treating um, and taking care of one particular pimple. And that is a misconception. Uh, the acne cycle begins days or weeks before blemishes reach the skin surface. So um, it's important to understand that it is a cycle and to understand how the cycle works um, in order to be able to see some improvement. So the acne cycle starts when hormones trigger sebum production. You may be asking yourself, what is sebum? Um, in layman's terms, it's oil. It's the scientific word for the oil that is in, uh, produced in your pores. Um, the Oxford definition is an oily secretion of the sebaceous glands. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but overproduction can be a bad thing. So what happens in the cycle is sebum combines with dead skin cells and that can lead to clogged pores. And then that's what you see and identify as a breakout. When the pores are clogged, the acne bacteria quickly multiply and that results in inflamed acne blemishes. So we're all in back to school mode. I figured now's a good time to talk about teen acne. The good news is that teen skin is different than adult skin. Teen skin tends to be more resilient with faster turnover. So that's a good thing. Um, the main cause or trigger of teen acne as opposed to adult acne is excess sebum production that's driven by significant hormonal changes. So for me, I have a teen and I have a preteen, and so they're both, I can tell, undergoing hormonal changes, and it has definitely changed the appearance of their skin. Um, so for a teen, you may see um, acne appearing in the T-zone, right? Forehead, nose, chin. Um, it could be all over the face, and the blemishes are more likely to be inflamed, red, swollen acne spots. In terms of treatment, um, I can definitely help. There are products on the market that are fabulous. Um, we have a regimen specifically geared towards teenagers, um, but I realize there are a lot of products on the market, so you may want to explore some other options too. I do think it's a good idea to talk about treating the acne cycle um, in terms of washing, cleansing, and treating um, prior to exploring a prescription medication because there are options that may work um, short of needing to take some sort of an oral medication. Um, you basically, in general, you want a powerful acne treatment that's designed for the kind of skin that we just discussed, for resilient young skin to combat the whole cycle. Um, it's not enough just to buy something that you spot treat on um, your pores. So, but in any event, you may not be interested in discussing um, product and that's okay. If you are, I wanted to let you know I'm here and I would be happy to help and we have a product that the doctors have designed specifically for teen and young adult skin. But assuming you don't wanna do that yet, I just thought that it might be helpful to come on here today and talk about maybe five quick tips that without spending any money are things that you can do yourself or that you can teach your teen or your tween to do to help fight acne. So number one, makeup brushes. If you have a child or you yourself are using a makeup brush, um, makeup brushes are a magnet for dead skin cells 
oil, dirt, bacteria, um, all the things that can wreak havoc on your complexion. So make sure that you, if you are, um, have acne prone skin or breakouts, make sure that you are washing your makeup brushes each and every time. Um, and there are lots of really great YouTube videos on how to make a homemade cleanser um, using dishwashing detergent, vinegar, and cleaning them. And then you just squeeze them out and dry them. So um, cleaner tools, clearer skin for sure. And along those same lines, tip number two is about tweezers. Uh, same concept again, a cleaner tool is going to lead to cleaner skin. You wanna be really careful that you are storing your tweezers in a sanitary place. So not at the bottom of your old makeup bag. And you wanna sanitize them before you're using them with something that has a germ killing property. So like uh, rubbing alcohol or hydrogen peroxide. Tip number three, um, pillowcases. If you are only breaking out on one side of your skin and you're a side sleeper, your pillow may be trying to tell you something. So you may be changing your sheets once a week and that's fine, but you might wanna consider changing your sheets every night or every other night um, so that that way you don't have a buildup on them of dirt and oil, which can lead to clog pores. The other thing you might wanna try is lightening up on the laundry detergent. It could be that the detergent is irritating your skin. Um, tip number four has to do with our phones. Um, your phone is in your hand all day long and so it's, you know, it might also be on the kitchen counter, on the table, and you're touching it and you're transferring bacteria from your fingers. And then of course, what do you do after that? You turn around, you pick up your phone and you put it up to your face. So you may be transferring a lot of the dirt and the bacteria from your hands or the kitchen counter to your phone and then transferring it to your face. The good news is that that has an easy fix. Clean your phone once a day with um, a wipe, a rubbing alcohol, um, and keep it away from your face. You might wanna consider using some headphones uh, or you might wanna have the kids consider using some kind of headphones so that that way you don't have to put it right up against your face. And tip number five is washing your hands. That one we should be doing anyway, even setting acne aside. Um, if your skin is pimple prone, keep your hands as clean as possible. The flow of bacteria and viruses and allergens from your fingertips uh, to your face will prompt a breakout. So try to curb the touching of your face. Um, try to teach your teens and tweens to break the habit of touching their faces um, because if they're doing that, they are making it worse. So in conclusion, um, I hope that those five tips are helpful for you to um, implement a quick fix. If you're looking for a more long-term solution and you wanna set your kids up with a really good routine with um, cleansing and taking care of their skin, let me know. I would really like to help with that. We have a fantastic product that's designed specifically for young adults and teens, and we're about to have a flash sale uh, where the regimen's gonna be 15% off. That's happening in the next few days. So if this is an issue that you're facing, that your child is facing, um, we should talk about it now while I can get you an even cheaper solution than normal. But if you're not interested in purchasing any product, that's okay. And I'm hope, just hoping that this was in some way helpful for you. If it was helpful, just um, drop me like a comment or a message and let me know that whether I should keep doing these or not. Have a great Friday, have a terrific weekend, and hopefully I will see you soon.